so my name is Inange Mobita and I work at the International Living Future Institute and I'll be presenting on the um, Zero Carbon Program. Yeah, so my name is Nange. I work as an energy research carbon manager and um, I help update and develop the handbooks and also just a little bit of an honest little tidbit. I am a bit of a newbie uh, and for the past couple of months been working on another program at ILFI, but I do have Haley Gardner here with me um, to help uh, answer any additional questions. Haley has a ton of knowledge and works with project teams, but yeah, hopefully this can be a really nice overview of the zero carbon program. Uh, and I just wanted to start with um, the vision statement, which is to decarbonize the built environment and reverse the effects of climate change uh, using carbon positive products um, and to hopefully have a positive impact on local economies and societies. Uh, so the zero carbon certification was released in April 2018 uh, and in October we released the zero carbon handbook uh, that has further details on clarification documentation requirements and whatnot. And so the zero carbon certification program addresses both the operational and embodied carbon um, to create carbon positive buildings. And so operational carbon is addressed by reducing and offsetting carbon. Um, projects need to demonstrate a reduction in to total net annual energy consumption as compared to a project specific baseline. Uh, and baselines can be established using an, a current typical building with comparable climate floor area use and occupancy, um, and teams can use approved tools such as the zero tool or edge tool to calculate these baselines. And so for new buildings, project teams are expected to have a 25% reduction of energy use intensity from an equivalent new building. Um, and for existing buildings it would need to show a 30% reduction. Uh, and so the second part of that is to offset 100% of remaining energy needs with on or offsite renewable energy sources, uh, specifically non combustion based renewable energy, and this includes solar, wind, geothermal, and tidal. Uh, another important part of our zero carbon definition is that no new combustion is allowed. Uh, so unlike LEED, that focuses more on having a clean energy source, zero carbon is really focused on teams implementing additional renewables, either on or offsite, uh, as well as having energy balance. So that additional, additionality piece and energy balance is an important component. Um, yeah, so in addition to looking at the operational energy, we're asking teams to also address um, their embodied carbon impacts. So project teams need to demonstrate, uh, must reduce embodied carbon emissions of primary materials by 10% compared to a baseline building of equivalent size function energy performance. Uh, and we ask teams to really focus on heavy structural materials. Um, teams that need to disclose reduction strategies and total embodied carbon, uh, which can't exceed 500 kilogram CO2 equivalent per meter squared. Uh, and this was established through the Carbon Leadership Forum benchmark case study. Um, and it's taken as a high median value. Obviously in the future, we're hoping to reduce that number so we can get closer to carbon positive. And then finally, uh, team lead to offset um, any of the embodied carbon emissions uh, associated with construction and materials of the project. Um, and this can either be done, this should be through the use of on-site um, carbon sequestering materials and any remaining offsets by a one-time purchase of carbon offsets. And so we asked him to purchase carbon offsets that are certified by Greeny Climate or an equivalent program uh, that ensures additionality, leakage prevention, permanence and audit verification. Uh, and then we also really asked him to disclose their whole building life cycle assessment so that we can get better targets in the future. Yeah, and so with these requirements, we're fostering carbon efforts that are authentic and that they authentically reduce carbon emissions and they're based on measured outcomes and not design. Um, require carbon efforts that are scalable and that they're applicable to any scale, type and location and efforts that are resilient, um, you know, creating efficient and safe buildings that add value to your asset. And so briefly, it's gonna look through some strategies to reduce embodied carbon. Um, and this is from highest impact, which is materials reduction. And this can be through building material reuse and lean design, uh, materials alternative through carbon sequestering materials uh, and product alternatives. And so it's a quick case study of a McKinstry project, which um, 
their main way of kind of addressing operational carbon was through the zero emissions district energy system. So being part of this clean community grid, as well as having a scaled approach to, to their offsite renewables. Um, and a strategy for their embodied carbon uh, was cross laminated timber. CL2, CLT was a huge part of their embodied carbon reduction strategy, and they achieved that through sustainably locally sourced wood. Uh, and yeah, I'm sure some of you may be aware, aware of the in depth study done by Carbon Leadership Forum on cross laminated timber, but here's a link if you want to learn more. Yeah, and then to kind of to continue to scale up these efforts, we've been working with tech companies and workplaces like Google. Um, Google piloted this interiors project two years ago, and one of the priorities was to create a flexible, adaptable space with lean design strategies um, that can be accommodating to different users and flexible working conditions. And so one of their main strategies was to design for reuse. Uh, so having 27% of components by cost for the interior fit out um, can be dismantled and reused for the same purpose. Uh, another strategy was maximizing recycled content, local sourcing of materials, and reusing existing building materials and furniture. And so they really were able to work or fit in embodied carbon into their ongoing healthy materials program. Um, and another interesting thing of this project is, you know, looking at creative solutions on how we um, not only reduce embodied carbon and materials, but how we occupy spaces and how we think of the impact. And so as great as the zero carbon certification is as, as well as other you know decarbonization efforts are we still kind of run in through some common carbon issues um, one of them being building specific targets for embodied carbon um, energy efficiency alignment with existing policies so trying to align our, our energy efficiency requirements especially since we work internationally with other policies but also going above and beyond existing policies and then also addressing carbon offsets um, and exploring hand printing pathways and how we can have more of a positive impact in that, way, in that way. And then, yeah, then here's a copy of the Zero Carbon Standard and the Zero Carbon Handbook. The Zero Carbon Standard just kind of gives an overview of um, the main requirements and um, the goals and the purpose of the Zero Carbon Certification Program. And the Zero Carbon Handbook um, has specific details on clarification, documentation requirements, exceptions, um, and so should hopefully be a, a useful resource to answer any program questions. Um, and it can be accessed through the membership through the IL5 membership dashboard. Um, but also, we have an amazing team um, of people at IL5 who help and with every single way with project teams so that they can get certified. And yeah, that was very brief, short presentation from my end. Um, thank you. And I can pass it on to the next person. Mm -hmm.